Okay, so let us start with something uh, as an introduction to Java. Okay, can you see the screen? Yes, yes sir. And sir. is it uh, my voice audible? Yes, yes sir. sir. What about Sudipto and uh, Kapil and Alok? Yes, sir, it's audible. Audible, okay, okay, very good. So, what is Java? If I say, then you say Java is a sir is a as a platform independent programming language. Why platform independent? There must be some meaning to each and everything that is uh, told or uh, written. We will question why it is platform dependent. That is what we are going to learn. That we are going to see. Platform independent means I I write the Java my Java code in say windows then once i compile it and change the code into some format then that format remains same for any other operating system like linux like red hat like uh, ubuntu like fedora like uh, mac os anywhere anything you name okay this java once you write use it anywhere right once use many times so because this platform earlier c++ you write c++ for windows then if you have to, if you have to convert that or port that into into what into unix then you have to convert that c++ into a c++ okay but here, once you write Java, any, any platform, you write the Java and compile that in Unix, you take that executable and now you can directly port it on Windows and you don't have to change a single line of code. That is called platform independent programming language. And yes, that, that is very important contribution of Java to the world. It has changed the, the way people write programs. Earlier, when you were writing C programs, Pascal programs, Fortran programs, COBOL programs, either it is very much platform dependent and also it was dependent on the compiler, it was dependent on the interpreter. So the interpreters, compilers keep on changing on the platforms. So you have to keep on changing the COBOL for, for Windows, COBOL for, COBOL for uh, Unix, COBOL for uh, Mac OS. All these things will be totally different syntax wise, syntactically and otherwise, functionally. So it is, if you have learned uh, 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 Unix, you will, uh, you will not be, uh, if there is a, uh, if there is a company who is, who is hiring a person knowing COBOL for Windows, so you will, though you know, you are not going to be selected because you do not, you have to learn COBOL for uh, Windows. So they might not select you, though you know COBOL in and out. Anyway, that is because you have to change the platform. You have to learn it from the scratch again. That is the thing that Java has given to this world that, yes, from Java onwards, you have this open source. That is open source platform. The platform, which is, it, it doesn't depend on any platform. You keep on plugging in your uh, APIs because it is an open source. It can accept. It is not platform dependent. We will also learn, uh, you see, we will learn the build, builders. The builders like the Maven. Okay. We will not learn Gradle, but we will learn uh, uh, Maven as well. So you will understand that this guy, this Java person has changed the world. The way things now, the very complicated things are getting ported easily. Without any issue. Okay. okay, somebody can, can you mute your uh, microphone because then 
Now, what is the pros? Pros means, so pros means the benefits or the advantage. Advantage of Java is that it is net friendly and has the all elements, all elements of network libraries because this is one thing which is very difficult to manage network libraries. But as a programmer, when you are using Java, you do not ha have to worry about this network libraries. It is already there in the SDK, in the Java software development kit, that SDK, that whatever you install. So see, as a programmer, what do you, earlier you were more concerned with the hows, how. Okay, how will I do this? How, how these things? Nowadays, you are not worried about how. You are only worried about what. W-H-A-T, what. Okay, that means the customer will give you uh, the, the requirements. The requirement is you must focus on the requirements, not on how to do and go about solving those requirements. No. As a programmer, as a designer, as a developer, you need to concentrate only on the what. Which features, what features have to be delivered. Yes, sir. Not that how the features are going to be built. Because that build infrastructure is, is uh, through the tools. Those tools are going to have uh, help you. And Java is one of the platforms with the framework, Java framework will help you to solve the hows. You don't worry about the memory management. You do not worry about the garbage garbage collection. You do not worry about object, uh, how objects are created and maintained. Because somebody else is going to take care of all these things. Yes, you have to write the proper way of coding. That's all. The rest will be taken care of by the framework provided by Java. And that framework, what we are going to learn is the core, core framework. Now this uh, Java, nowadays you have the spring, spring framework. But that spring framework is also based on Java. So unless you know Java, you will not be able to understand the spring framework. Okay. Yes, sir. And cons. Cons means what are the disadvantages? Yes. Disadvantage is one big disadvantage. Not this one. This is also an advantage because there is the continuous development underway. So a Java programmer needs to update continuously. That is continuous. one way it is good. And the other way it is um, you have to keep on upgrading yourself. You cannot only keep into one uh, skill area. Yes, sir. That is a challenge and whoever likes to have challenges, they enjoy this challenge. Clear? For somebody, it might be a challenge, but for someone else, it might be an opportunity. So I will say that Java has not, nothing of a cons. Everything is pros for Java. Because this also is, to me, a disguise a boon in disguise. You may not like it, but because you accept challenges and try to learn new things, you will be demanded. You will be demanded in the market. Your demand is high in the market. You get promotions. You get appraisals, good appraisals. Because you are the only guy who is liking to take up the challenges, learning new technology, and upgrading himself or herself. So that is an advantage, I will say. And also you become relevant, relevant in, this, in this competing world. If you learn only one skill and say that I will continue with that skill for uh, coming five years, you are wrong. Because in this five years, if you do not upgrade yourself 
at least to another one or two new technology, then you will be obsolete. The others will leave you behind. Just remember this thing. So it is not that you are only stuck at one part. You have to keep on moving. Moving ahead. Every day you must learn new things. That is, uh, But the interesting features, if you say, it is automatic type checking. Type checking type is a class. I mean, we will come to all those object uh, things. Then automatic garbage collection. Garbage means something you are dumping everything on the memory, right? Whenever you are writing a program, actually what are you doing? Your program is loaded into the RAM, into the, into the memory area. And you are creating objects and this and that. You are creating files and everything is getting stored in the memory. And most of the time you are creating the objects, but you are not. Uh, so if the object is not uh, I mean, being used, it should not remain in the memory. The memory is a very costly resource for any organization. If you cannot handle the memory properly, then you, however good your program is, your program is not good if your program's performance is not, not good. And your program's performance will only be good when you know in and out of how to manage the memory correctly. And that was a nightmare, you know, nightmare for the programmers that you have to do a lot of configuration to make, to keep the memory healthy. And also your program should use the latest, uh, I mean, the way of keeping the memory healthy. You cannot keep the one object that you have created. If you have opened one resource, an object is a resource, okay? A file is also a resource. If you have opened a file to write or read, <clears throat> you should not keep the file open. Once the read operation or the write operation is over, you must immediately close it. Or maybe think of a situation where you are using a database connection through a JDBC pipe, JDBC connection. Now that is also a resource. No? It's a network resource. Your, your database is lying in a different server and you are, you, you are writing on a development server. Your, uh, your database, you are having it on uh, access on a pre-production server or some testing server where your database or uh, maybe a particular dedicated de uh, uh, database server for your development. But these two are related, uh, linked to each other through a network. Now think of a situation where you have opened say 10 tables, you have accessed connection to 10 tables in that database that you are working with. And none of the tables are getting used, but you have kept it open. The connection is still on. Is that a good way of writing program? No, sir. No, never. If you are not using something, why are you uh, keeping the memory engaged? That is not a good program. And finally, if you keep on uh, blocking the memory, your program will start running slowly. Forget about others. There are, see in production, think of a situation where there are hundreds of programs running and your program is also running. If every of your program or all of these hundred programs have not been written correctly, then can you think of the memory? Memory is constrained. Memory is, uh, uh, you cannot keep on expanding on the memory. The memory, if it is uh, uh, 32, 30 GB memory, it will remain 30 GB. And 30 GB memory is very costly memory. So your, uh, but your program should have taken only 2 GB. All these 100 programs should have taken 2 GB at any point of time, but they are scaling up to 28 GB. And slowly and slowly, all the programs are getting performance degraded because you have not written the, the program correctly. The memory management was not done correctly. So the performance finally, of all the programs becoming very slow. Or maybe other programs, 99 programs are done very well, but your program, you have not taken care very well. The memory management is not, you have, you, your program will not pass the performance testing because before any code, before any code going into, 
before any code going into uh, this thing. There, there is some noise coming. Okay. Uh, before any code of yours going into production, it will go through a rigorous testing. Then there will be a rigorous performance testing as well. Only when your program passes all these stringent tests, it will be allowed to go into production. Because if your program is not optimized, tuned for performance, then what will happen? Once that program goes into production, it will affect the other programs which were running otherwise very fine. Are you getting me? So that becomes a nightmare if you have to take care of the garbage collection. So Java framework does it for you. Java also simplifies the pointers. In C and C++, if you have, if any one of you are aware of C, C++, Yes, sir. Okay. Did you use pointers? Yes, sir. You can use a single pointer, you can use a double pointer, and you can n number of pointers. So a pointer to a pointer to a pointer to a pointer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So that is basically what you are what you are doing. That is you are trying to manage the memory, the memory addressing. You are addressing a particular section of a memory where something is either a function is residing or a object is residing or something is residing some variable is there you are you are pointing to that uh, address of that particular variable or maybe an array or maybe a linked list okay a linear link, link list or a cyclic link list but these are through pointers now think of those programmers who were writing programs in c c++ you have to be very expert. You have to know C, C++ and the pointers very well. Otherwise, it will be a nightmare for you to, there will be many memory dumps, code dumps and memory leaks. And finally, you will give up, give up. You will have sleepless nights in debugging your program, but still ultimately you will not be able to do it. Many programs have failed. Many projects have failed in C and C++ because Programmers were not being able to handle the pointer correctly. But then Java's thought, I will give the, the programmers, the developers a bit respite. I will take away the pointers altogether. I will do the management of the pointers. Let the programmers concentrate on what, how the memory is to be managed, I will take care. So Java has taken out pointers altogether out of the programmer's hands. Do you think it is a good point or a bad point? Yeah, if you are very uh, a fan of pointers, then you will miss pointers. But nobody, I am, I am, I'm sure nobody in this world is a fan of using pointers in a program. It's a nightmare. Huh? You might know it well, but anyway, Java has given an opportunity for a weak programmer also to do good programs. A programmer who didn't know pointers or who was afraid of writing pointers. So suppose there is uh, uh, your, so everyone in, in, a, in a class, say 60%, uh, sorry, 80% uh, of the students are very good in maths. And 20% of the people are uh, weak in maths. They are afraid of mathematics. But should the education system be like that, this 20 people, this 20% of the students will stand nowhere in this world because they do not know mathematics or they do not like mathematics? Is that is that a justified or is, is it fair to them? They are also, they, everyone might not uh, understand mathematics, but he, they might have a very good a talent in arts, in in uh, in your English language, in a language. Many many things are there. Not only mathematics. Only the people who is knowing mathematics are good. They will get the job. They will get uh, the best things of life. No, that cannot happen. That should not happen. So Java thought of everyone. There are good programmers and there are 
are not so good programmers as well. So why should I distinct and uh, differentiate between these two guys? Let them everyone enjoy Java. Because I have taken out the headache of garbage collection. The I I can do the automatic type ch checking. I can I can handle the pointers. Let not the programmers worry about that. Is isn't that good? Yes. Okay. So no one directly no directly accessible pointers to memory avoiding memory leakage. So memory leakage and all those things. I am programmers are no longer handling. Java is handling so, therefore, there is no memory leakage at all. Uh, or I will say not at all, I will not say, but uh, most of the time, almost 90% of the time, memory leakages are avoided because Java has taken over. This is another very important aspect, as we were saying, it was net friendly. So it has simplified network access. It has few classes and all those things, inbuilt classes that will help you to access the network and IO and multi-threading. All this input output, multi-threading, all these things are nightmare earlier if you are doing C and C++. But if this has simplified, we will learn multi-threading. You will see how easy it has become. You do not have to use mutexes. To understand mutexes in C, it was a nightmare. Okay. Are you finding a bit uh, uh, imp importance of Java? Why you are learning Java? Yes, sir. Yeah. Let yes, us see how Java works. Okay. Okay. Now, Java, let's say um, you will be using one ID. ID means uh, something which looks like this. It is, this is called an Eclipse editor. Eclipse, you see? This is an Eclipse workspace or Eclipse ID. ID is integrated development environment where you are going to write the, the Java code. And only not that it will help you to... It's, it's an editor, but it is more than an editor. It's totally a development environment where you will be helped. Context-sensitive help will be there. Uh, as, as we progress, we will uh, come to know. And then you can run it, you can debug it, you can build your, you can compile it, everything in one place. You do not need to go to command line to do a uh, compilation of Java. You do not need to come to command line. Mm -hmm. This is a command prompt. Sudipto, this is the command prompt. Or you can say the DOS prompt. Okay. Where okay. you give some give some commands to be interpreted. IDE full form type to Judy Akbar Bolin. To be interpreted by give some commands to be interpreted by the OS. OS means operating system. or by the, the software that you have downloaded by the software. So if you are writing a Java uh, command, then your Java JDK has to be installed. That software has to be installed. Okay, by the software, uh, interpreted by the software and through, sorry, so through the operating system, operating, system os we say os what are the os's you have os's like uh, your dos windows now dos it was earlier days now windows come with, along with the dos so better to say you start with windows windows then there is unix then there is uh, your Mac, Mac OS. All these three flavors. Now there are many variations of Windows. 
there is many flavors of Unix and there is one or two flavors of Mac OS. Macintosh. Now, this Windows, if I press enter, what was my first command? Give. I have just written some statement. It is not actually a command because it is saying give is not recognized as an internal or external command. Operable program or the batch file. So who is giving this uh, error message? Somebody is giving this error message? Yes, sir. So it is given by actually Windows, but more particularly by DOS disk operating system. Disk operating. This is an operating system as well. Operating system embedded within Windows because DOS doesn't come separately. Windows more particularly. So who has given this error message? Somebody has interpreted. This is not a valid command. Okay, because it is given by Windows. Now, I would like to see the version of Java that we are going to work with. I have installed Java. How do I know? I am giving a command to, the, uh, to my Windows saying that please help me to learn about what is the Java version that I have installed. Okay, what I will do? I will say, ja sorry, all, all commands should be in small letters. Java minus minus version. I want to check the version of Java that is installed in my system. Then when I press enter, you see now it has been, I get a result. I'm not getting any error. Just one minute. Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, so here what we are getting something, I, I have not started Java. I'm not starting anything. I'm just giving you an, uh, just a view of what is what. So when I say that I want to check that what is the version of Java that I have installed, I have given a DOS command or a uh, command prompt. I have written this command in the command prompt. This is called the command from okay this black screen and how did i come to this black screen i have said cmd this is the command prompt okay that i click over here i came to this portion now what it is saying that i have installed java which is jdk 16 Point zero point two, and it is from 2021, the version. Java trademark, this is TM. AC means standard edition. Java, which is nothing but the Java code. Runtime engine, JRE. Did you heard this term, JRE? Runtime engine. Why I'm saying this? Because we are going to see this, the same thing here. Can you see this screen? Yes sir. Yes, sir. yes, sir. So this is nothing but the JVM. JVM. JVM is running here. Java. Java virtual, virtual machine. machine. Java virtual machine. Very, very good. See, VM, virtual machine. And the build is the JDK. JDK is, JDK is Java development kit. Java development kit. Very good. You are doing some Java development and that 
that many libraries, many inbuilt libraries will be provided and it is included in the JDK. JDK. Okay. This is the JDK. And this is a JVM. So entire thing is a JDK. JDK version 16.0.2 or JDK 16, you can say. Which is including a Java runtime engine. JRE. JRE. Java runtime engine. Java runtime engine. <coughs> okay. This is the Java runtime engine. And then there is... So... So this was a valid command. This was a good command. If I had given simply Java, yes. So it is giving me all which I will do in the, uh, as a command. I will have to issue some command to do all these things. If I want to compile, I have a file called say, uh, my first Java, Dot, my java file dot java i have to write any java file with an extension dot java it's a text file definitely it's a text file okay if that is so i would like to compile this <coughs> compile this how do i do this we have to write java c java c java c java c and then you say enter. You are compiling it. You are you are compiling the Java code or the file. Java code. The, basically the Java program or the program written in the file. What is the file? File is my first Java file. Java. First Java file. Dot Java. Dot Java. Dot Java. Okay. So that is the my Java file, which I am compiling through minus C and giving Java. So Java is the compiler or whatever it is and java can compile whenever you give an instruction that minus c and that is the option and you are supplying you are giving an argument called that file which file you want to compile so this is you are compiling the java code or the the program written in the java file this one now i want to execute this so i will make this will convert this java which is a text file into some some file with a different format and that format is called the byte code java byte code and that byte code is only the thing that the java runtime engine understands now if i press enter <coughs> giving java c Okay, if I see Inter. now, file not found. Java C is fine. That is uh, no no complaint coming from this because it is already there. It knows the path. Uh, but what about this? In this user C users HP, if I go and check, I will not find this Java file. Because there is no, I'm just to, sh to show you. So this error is coming from the compiler, from Java C. Java C is giving this error. What is the error it is saying? File not found. What is the file not found? My first, My Java. first Java file. So it is saying that you say Java C gives some options. Okay. Uh, and But you mentioned the source file, which is correct. I can find it. Uh, you can give me an absolute path. If you do not give me any path, I'm not finding the Java file into the, in, in this particular folder. Folder. Okay. So this is something happening from the uh, compiler side. That is a different thing. So everything now becomes, let's say 
I want to see whether I have Choco or Chocolatey installed. Minus V. Yes, I have Chocolatey installed. 0 0.10.15. When I was showing the Java, Java minus C, uh, sorry, Java minus minus version, it was giving in this style because that is the way Java gives you the version number. Here, chocolatey is giving me uh, directly the only the version number. That's all. Okay. Now I come to my uh, this thing. So did you understand? I have a source file, Java source code. This is the compile time in environment. Okay. Yes, sir. This is the compile time environment. And I am showing you that first of all, I will start. I have to write a code, a Java code, a Java program. Where I will write that we will come. That is an ID. Okay. You wanted to know about ID. So ID is integrated development environment. Development environment. environment. Which is IDE. Okay. Okay, sir. So where we can write uh, Java program? where you write a java program it's an integrated development not only you will write java program you can uh, you can run it you can compile it sorry you can compile it you can build it you can run it like here i have to compile with a command line with a command line command java sorry ja, where is that java J, java c and you do not have you haven't given any uh, compiler options but anyway you have given this file name so it will compile but you have to give an instruction. Whereas whenever you are using integrated development environment of ID, let's say a very popular one is Eclipse. Eclipse. IntelliJ. IntelliJ ID. Or for the spring, very famous is Spring. STS. Tools. Very good. STS. Yes, sir. STS4. Okay. Yeah, STS, correct. So these are all integrated development environment where you can write a code, you will get context sensitive help, you can compile it, you can debug it, you can run it, you can see the result in the terminal. Uh, or you can invoke a browser, you can see the output on the web browser, everything, but you do not have to come anywhere else. You do not have to write a single line of command to get them compiled or you have to run it. Whenever you want to run the Java program, what you do after that uh, bytecode has been created, you say after the compilation, you say Java and that file name, the what the uh, that class basically it will it will be converted to my first java file dot class which is a bytecode a binary file <coughs> you are going to run now you are running it compilation is over it was successfully compiled you do not say dot class you just leave it like this clear but that is also a command that you are going to give. But in an ID, in an ID like this, you are not going to write any command. You will just say, I want to run. Okay. Or you just say, whenever this is configured, that whenever you save, save the, the Java file, it will be compiled together. So you do not have to say Java C. Which ID we use now? Huh? So which ID we use now for the teaching? So Eclipse or what? Oh, which uh, which one? Which ID? And this is the most popular ID. So you will we will learn to do it. But IDs are IDs. Every every ID is the same. But we will standardize on Eclipse. No, no, Eclipse. Okay. 
we will learn on eclipse id for java for uh, for spring we will learn on sts sts okay because it brings in some more features on the id on top of eclipse clear yes sir how to install eclipse ha huh, those, those things we will come step by step okay everything will be told we, we will run uh, we will do coding lots of coding let us understand before we start with the coding and this and that uh, we will go by steps then this you have to use a java compiler to compile this into a class so the dot, dot java will be converted to a dot class dot class file and that is called a java bytecode it is not a file that you can interpret it is only understood by the jvm java virtual machine which is also a compile time environment now you have written this up to class you have written this but then you have are trying to deploy it onto a different server maybe but for your for the for the time being you are doing everything locally in your laptop or in your desktop okay so your compile environment where you compile from java to class that is the id and the jvm is all in the same machine you do not have to traverse this network path otherwise most of the development environment where you will be developing it and where you are deploying it will be two different servers so in that case you just compile it up to class and then send it over the network java bytecodes move locally or through network either you are using the same machine or a different machine you send it you ftp it or whatever you deploy it to some other server or to some other machine where your jvm is installed okay okay but here yes, since we are doing in, in our we are not accessing any server we are not we are not going to access any server on the cloud so we are doing it locally that's fine but our knowledge is important so java code java byte code now it is has become a java byte code then there is the class loader it will be loaded with the class loader by and it will be combined so this class loader knows that i have a class which has been fed to me into this java environment java virtual machine i will work on this class but then i will i will combine the libraries i will take from the repository of libraries of java sorry so uh, what is happening we have a repository of java library that is java virtual machine knows that is you know that we have just now seen that jre java run java runtime engine that jre has a has a repository of libraries we will see in in whenever we will see in the, we will go to eclipse and we will see that Sorry. that jre will have a lots of library which will support your class because by default it doesn't know which are the libraries that you are using into this particular class therefore the class loader will take the help of because the class loader now has the class dot class file that whatever the file name dot dot class it knows that this particular guy has used so many libraries so i will call those libraries from the java class library repository and come and combine that with that byte bytecode 
and then I will pass it on to Java interpreter or just in time compiler. Don't worry about this thing. You just uh, understand that, that that is a Java interpreter. And that is nothing but included in the runtime system of JVM. So after this is compiled and bytecode verified, because this bytecode might have some problem that will be verified with the class loader. If there is some issues, it will, it will let you know. Then you will again correct it, again compile it, then again send it to the class loader. Class loader. Okay. And again, and this process will be repeated again and again, unless your, this is perfect. No errors anything and now this java interpreter will work on this uh, uh, bytecode that dot class and it will that operating system just now we were seeing that operating system okay so now it will be you will be able to run it with the help of the operating system and that operating system now your program, you wanted to display something on the monitor, on the console. The output is displayed. Who will help me? The hardware part will help me because the output is always either in the printer or on the monitor or onto the file, which is also a hardware because hard disk is a hardware. A file will be stored in the hard disk. So any IO will be supported by the hardware. So is the cycle complete? So you have started with a Java text file. You have written a file, text file, compiled it to a class, bytecode, moved it to the class That's loader, will work on this byte verifier, taking the help of the Java library that you have used. And there is the Java interpreter, which will work on this bytecode or uh, yeah, bytecode. And then it will be an executable file, which can be run by the operating system. And the output, is helped by the hardware. Is this picture clear? You have to understand this picture. Yes, very sir. Clearly. Yes, sir. Fine. Thank you. So Java, it is part of how it works. Java, therefore, we see it's a very independent. Now, up to this, you have done it in Windows. Okay. This one doesn't matter whether it's Windows or um, Unix or Mac, this part, because this was a class which was built over uh, in Windows. This is a Unix machine on the server, doesn't matter. Your class loader can interpret this. So that's why it becomes a platform independent architecture. Java is therefore independent of any platform. It only depends on the Java virtual machine. Of course, yes, it needs a Java virtual machine and that you will install. The Java code is compiled into bytecode, which is then interpreted by JVM, Java interpreter. Correct? Java interpreter in the JVM, Java interpreter. And JIT compiler compiles back with speed. So the intervening interfaces do not eat up time unlike other platform dependent compilers. Now, that is the beauty. It is not only Java interpreter, but just in time compiler, what will it do? It will pick up your code, byte code, and also do just in time compilation such that your, uh, unlike other platforms, it is independent of the platform. Therefore, it can speed up the compilation and whatever interfaces, these interfaces are platform dependent. So it will just overlook all the intervening interfaces and it will make it very much platform uh, independent. Therefore, since it is not platform, it has, it has not to convert the, the Windows compiled com, uh, dot class, class file into a Unix Unix class file, that, that, com, that conversion is taken away. Because we are not only using a binary 
binary file, but it is a byte code. The byte code is can be interpreted by Windows, can be interpreted by Unix, can be interpreted by Mac without wasting any time because the JIT compiler, the just-in-time compiler will help you to know, uh, I mean, to avoid any conversion because there is no platform, no dependency on the platform. That is the beauty of this. And also very important is the Java security. Today, in today's world, if you, can you think of any app, a, app or API to be uh, unsecured? If you do not, if you are not able to secure your, your API or app or your program or your code, then your code will not be passed and not be put into production. It has to be made secured. And Java will help you. How? First of all, one big advantage is pointer denial, as we have discussed. It reduces the chances of virus and programs corrupting host because through the pointers, my virus can propagate and go to that particular memory address and corrupt that memory address. Because Java has taken away the pointers altogether. So do you think there is a chance of virus attacking your program? Because the entire framework will help me give me the security because it has not handled anything of the memory with pointers. Using pointers, one big disadvantage was it was actually you are giving the reference to that address to the pointer. And that is what the virus wants. It wants to go to that particular address to corrupt, to corrupt it, to eat that particular address such that your data, you cannot reference to that. You are fetching an important data from that address, but that address is itself gone, corrupted. So Java is a secured one, secured platform. Applets, earlier you used to use applets. Now that becomes more restricted. Now the applets, whatever you have developed through Java, may not run local executables, read or write to local file system, communicate with any server other than the originating server. So these are part of the security, just to let you know. Java is very much object oriented, right? You understand that. Java was the first guy who has given the concept of OOPS, object oriented programming uh, services, or or object-oriented programming design. Wood and OOP. OO, object-oriented programming and object-oriented design patterns. What are the object-oriented design patterns? First time you will, no, not first time. I mean, the world with Java came polymorphism, inheritance encapsulation. These are the terms. First time people, you started using Java oriented, object oriented concepts, which is polymorphism, inheritance, encapsulation. Very important, th three important things of object oriented programming. You have to know all these things very well. Okay. Yes, sir. Java program contains references. References are interfaces. We will know what is interface. And instantiations of classes, object creation. So Java programs, you will need to create an object, but how you can use interfaces to reference. And the classes, the Java classes encapsulates the attributes and methods. Encapsulates, who can tell me what is encapsulates? that entity classes encapsulates. I do not need to uh, need you to answer what is encapsulation, no need. But let me know what is in an overall, by a, from a layman's point of view, what does encapsulation mean to you? So binding all the features in one. Uh, that is one like, good question, uh, answer. Like yes. 
capsule including all the types of medicines okay that is okay that is one uh, is it all of yes sir yeah all of you are almost there but there is also one important aspect of encapsulation sir encapsulation simply means that uh, um, sensitive uh, hidden data uh, from the correct. user yeah, exact correct word encapsulation is hiding the data data means the attributes and the method is also data the methods are functions so the attributes are the fields like in tables tables you have what rows are a rows of fields so a table is nothing but an intersection of uh, rows versus columns matrix of rows and columns right the columns are the fields and the rows are the entities so we say that these are entity classes which will have the the columns which constitute the entity so if i am an employee i will have an employee id my date of joining uh, and sorry my first of all the employee id the id the very important unique key id and then i will have the uh, name employee name then there will be employee age date of joining uh, maybe salary or uh, i mean salary can be in a different table but all this are data those are columns and i will say that one unique employee id will represent one one row of data so i will say that that employee is one entity entity can i say that employee which is a row of data is an employee uh, is an entity yes sir and that is nothing but this one class entity class entity class will have the fields which will constitute the role and also the method the functions the events it can be all hidden because my name my aadhar card number all these things which are there in the employee database which is one entity class uh, all this needs to be hidden hidden from the outer world otherwise this data will be i mean the the sanctity of the data is violated the security the this is these are the data which needs to be protected these are sensitive data so that we will learn in details so classes encapsulates the attributes and the methods and java has benefits which are lots of benefits but one of we can list a few things portable write once run anywhere as we have discussed security is inbuilt into design robust memory ma management memory management no longer resides with the programmer see how what is the big advantage design otherwise you will be having nightmares designed for network programming yes it is completely true but it is behind the scene you will not be affected you do not know how it is working but it is working multi threading it is already multi threaded multiple tasks at the same time handled during run time it is dynamic and extensible loads of library and today also as i speak maybe there are uh, two or three libraries more added into java so each and every day it is expanding people this is an open source people are creating libraries creating functions creating apis and plugging them into java such that java becomes rich day by day sudipto so, uh, um, am i a bit fast yes sir can you follow me yes sir i am follow awesome. okay very good so dynamic and extensible how classes are stored in separate files you have the java file you have the class file 
you have the dot java you have the dot class but they are not in the same directory we will see they are kept separately okay loaded only when needed has do not clutter memory okay this is dynamic why because they the memory management is not in your hands it has been taken over by java so java does what it will understand when you need that particular class to be loaded then only it will um, load the object or the class such that and whenever the the use is over it will just garbage collect it it will clean up the memory such that the memory does not clutter okay yes sir yes sir so this concludes a bit of theory on the java let us come back and let us come back to this and in the road map what we have seen now is introduction to java Uh, then you have this getting started and the how java works we are going to know about eclipse that is the editor editor not only editor it is not only word word document or notepad or notepad plus plus it is something more than that and much bigger than that is a total environment development environment you don't have to go outside the id id is everything okay now this is the id eclipse workspace or eclipse id okay this yes, is sir. on the left hand side there is the navigator the package explorer and this is the area where you write your code now i have not started i will just say that this is one of the class or a java file so see this is exactly english language and you are writing in english on this body on this editor you do something okay and then you what you do either you click on this right click on this you go to run and run java application as a java application see did you have to go to did you have to go to the command prompt then java c then class name and all these things are not java. needed at all all these things are not needed because you are this id is helping you to give you all these things the id will help you to <coughs> indent indent means it will uh, help you to indent means the indentation of a program that this class and this is the method so this method is under this class so i cannot keep it in the same level this should not be like this this should be like this it should come inside because this is the parent and this is something inside that parent this is a method when inside the class like i am doing something with for i am not discussing the programs as yet i am not into java as yet but uh, what i am doing is i am just understanding that i am giving the uh, beginning of the body of the for the code and i have written one line of code inside the for that will repeat keep on repeating but did you see that i have not started it from here i am indenting it okay yes sir so i will come to that what are the features how will you use it let us first understand how you will install the eclipse id that is the first thing yes sir and another thing is you are going to get the recording maybe after a day or if you are lucky you can get it the very next day so today you have uh, got a recording uh, we, we will have a recording tomorrow morning by morning or say by i don't know 
but uh, we are trying to do it fast. <coughs> what is happening is we are uploading into the YouTube. It is not only me. There are a few more uh, sessions going on parallelly. Okay. And therefore, all these recordings have to be organized and put it in a chrono chronological order into the YouTube. Therefore, it takes a bit of time. First of all, this entire recording has to be converted, merged, and put into YouTube. So that might take time. But once you get the recording, I will say that you go through it once again. And pause. Keep on pausing the window. Keep, take your notes. And at the same time, as we will discuss the examples, you also try it at your home. Like you study any YouTube video. Keep on pausing. Then write on your Eclipse editor. <coughs> run it. And see the result. And then play around with the program. Okay, just give me one yes. minute. Okay. So now I will discuss about how you are going to work with Eclipse. Not work. How will you first of all install Eclipse or download basically? Most of you will be working on Windows or everyone will be working on Windows? Yes, sir. So, and I will suggest that you must have Windows 10. Do yes, not sir. use yes, Windows sir. 7 anymore. Okay, okay, so you go to. I have Windows 11. There is any problem. Okay, no problem. No problem. You okay, do it. Sir. You go here and say Eclipse download. Very simple. Eclipse download. This is the official site, eclipse.org. This is the official site of Eclipse. So go there. And I will say that you can go over here. Eclipse ID for Java EE. Huh, Kapil, you tell me. Hello, sir. Um, sir, so this has told me, sir, this is the Java class, uh, not a, a full, full stack uh, classes, sir. Okay. Uh, so, awesome. so this has told me, as uh, you, Kapil, uh, now you're going to a full stack uh, classes, sir, not a Java classes. Uh, huh, the full, Java full stack class starts from Java only. Sir, it's a Java, sir. Ha, Java. So what, what did you want it? Uh, what did you want? Sir, uh, this has told me, sir, uh, HTML, uh, you will first uh, start it uh, now, right now. So HTML. It's, a, it's a simple Java, sir. Ha, ha. So th this is my question, sir. Uh, I'm not uh, starting HTML. No, it's a... Uh, uh, no, no, we are not starting HTML. HTML is not part of Java. I, I know, sir. I know very well, sir. Uh, so, so this HTML has told me, sir. To HTML. HTML, you have to pick up. HTML is such an easy language. I know, sir. So you have to pick up from HTML uh, separately. We will use web web uh, web server. We will go to JSP servlet. But after yeah. Java only. Java and JavaScript. 
Java and JavaScript, not a CSS part, sir. CSS, HTML, these are, you have to pick it up. We are not going to teach it in the Java full stack. Okay, sir. Thank you for the conversation, sir. Sorry for disturbance. No, 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 not a problem. You must uh, see, this is the first class. You must clear all your doubts, uh, whatever you have been told. I am not aware what has been told, but mm -hmm. uh, we can, you can have a discussion with uh, Sunit, sir, saying yeah. that Devasi sir has told that this is uh, going to be Java full stack, starting from Java with JavaScript, then uh, you will have JS, uh, JSP servlet, then you will have Spring, Spring Boot, and then yeah. you will have TypeScript, you will have Angular, and then React. Sir, uh, I'm I'm uh, sir uh, I'm learning a uh, Angular uh, sir Java uh, full course um, by me sir uh, in uh, Coursera. Huh. So sir, uh, all all subjects are cleared sir. Not as sir as JavaScript. So uh, I'm learning only uh, JavaScript sir. Oh okay. So you would like to learn JavaScript only? Yeah sir. Okay, fine, but, uh, but uh, Java script will start only after Java, uh, this thing, uh, this Java is completed. Java is completed, sir. Sir, okay, sir. Okay, so you can have a, uh, you can speak to Sunit as well. Yeah. Just to okay. clarify. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So you have to go to Eclipse ID for Java EE. Don't go for Eclipse ID for Java developers. And you go here. Okay. You can get Eclipse ID 20, 2112. Download for 64 bit. You click over here. And then This is the file. Uh, I have already had that. I have already had that downloaded. So you can just uh, download it. And once you download it, you should be able to double click on that download. Okay. You double click on that download. And then after after that you can start installing it. See, this is already started downloading. I will not I will not download it because I have already downloaded. After this is entirely this see there's an exe file. Okay, you just have to double click on it and it will start installing. So installation is very simple. Once you do the installation, once you do the installation, you will be able to either you can store it in your you can pin it into your uh, into this uh, area tax bar you can say this is a tax bar you can put it into the tax bar like uh, like i what i have done and then open it once you open it you will have this interface if you face any problem in installing this Uh, Eclipse ID. You just let me know. We are uh, we are there. You are there in the group uh, group number seventeen, right? In the WhatsApp. In that WhatsApp grab, you just put me a message that sir, I am not being able to, or there is some issue. We can have a one to one discussion. Okay, sir. Okay, but first of all, you have to install this Eclipse. Once you install the Eclipse, you will get something like this. Eclipse. Wherever you have installed Eclipse, I have installed Eclipse under C colon Eclipse and Eclipse. This is the location. So Eclipse exe is the main executable. So setting the path and everything will be done automatically once you do this. Okay. Few things. Uh, where are we?
So the roadmap. I will tell you few of the tricks and tips while you are starting to work with Eclipse. We will start from next day, uh, the main programming part of how we are going to start working on Eclipse. So before that, you have to get this installed. Okay. Next day, we are actually going into the programming with this so this is the first class so we had an introduction of this and we will we, we had known what the eclipse how eclipse can be installed and once you have installed it you will get this interface you will have this package explorer or maybe something very empty don't worry because you have not started we will start creating a java project Or you can start, um, start, yeah, first of all, you have to do a Java project. Because see, anything in this environment, in this ID environment, you always do something with a project. Now, this is a project. I've created a project. And once I have created a project, so this is a, what is the type? It is project. And where did I save it? It is under Devashi's Java code. And exactly the path is, absolute path is D colon Devashi's GBS Java SE training. This is the folder where my project has been created. We will see uh, next day how we create a project and then we will start using how we create a Java program. How do we, did we create this uh, file? Let's say we will start from variable demo. So this must be a Java file. Yes, this is a Java file. You see, the name of the file is variable demo dot Java. This is the main file because the file which will have the main method is that particular class or a file. And this variable demo has been created under default package. Now, uh, this packages will come very late. This packages we will learn under, uh, where was it? package almost like 41 item number 41 but i will it, to, um, uh, on the uh, the next day only we will give an idea of a package just a preliminary idea of the package because we are going to create under the default package all the files first of all i will not go to this is a package with a name this is a package without any name i have collected all this because Till the point we have reached, 14, uh, 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 point number 41, I will not start with this package because there are many programs under this package as well. Okay, many programs. And there is the test, uh, the test class as well, the test uh, package as well, where I've kept only one program, Java program. Then we will see that there is Okay. Next day, we will see how we create a project, how we create, uh, there is a default package, how we put in our first file. Clear? Yes, sir. How we create a first class. Though we will have no, no concept of class right now, but then we will do that. Okay. Just one thing more. As we were seeing, the JRE, did you see this JRE system library? Yes, sir. And it is JDK 1.8? Yes, sir. You see, we have discussed Java class library. So this is part of the JRE, Java Runtime Engine, the virtual machine. That is having all these libraries. These are all libraries, jar files, you know, jar files. And under each of this, there are so many things. This is one class file. So many class files. So these are all class files that is going to help us uh, in our 
compilation. RT, see all this, mo, mo, mostly all this, uh, whatever, this oracle.net. com oracle niu so so you will not be having any problems in connecting to oracle or to any because all these libraries are inbuilt you see how many of them i'm only in a particular class uh, in a particular package so rt jar is having so many libraries so many things everything included under GRE, GRE system library. So are you, are understanding that how the structure, how the infrastructure has been designed. This one. Yes, sir. Next day, we are going to start off with uh, the, assuming that you have installed Eclipse, we will start with our first program in Java. The variables in Java. Variable in Java. Yeah. Okay, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So I will stop the sharing. And, uh, I will stop the recording.